Hi, my name is Mark Egan. I'm an immigration attorney with Gunderson Denton and Peterson in Mesa, Arizona. And I wanted to take a minute. I've been doing a number of videos on different topics in immigration, but I was recently told that what people really want to know about is my story. Why are you doing what you're doing? I love telling my story. I just didn't know that it was important, but it perhaps it is. I'd be happy to tell it. I'm an immigration attorney, not because I started in a different area and got tired of it and tried something else and ended up here. I wanted to be an immigration attorney before I went to law school. Uh, originally, I didn't want to be a lawyer or an immigration attorney. I wanted to be a pilot in the Air Force. Uh, that didn't work out as well as I had hoped. And I was planning on becoming a computer programmer working with flight simulators. Ran into a friend who had spent some time um, actually had finished the first year of law school and said, you ought to be an attorney. After thinking it over, I realized I had similar skill sets, but I still wasn't convinced that I wanted to be an attorney. But I ended up getting married to a girl from Peru who had come into the country on a tourist visa to attend a wedding and overstayed. We got married and we needed to adjust her status. Fortunately for me, I had the help of a very experienced uh, law office, uh, an attorney that has practiced law for many years in immigration and a paralegal who is a good friend of mine and was able to get some expert guidance in the process. Even with that help, I was amazed at how difficult it was to figure out the forms, not just understanding what they said, but what they really meant and what would be the consequence if I thought they meant this, but they really meant something else. There's so much writing on these applications. So much of your future might be determined by, did I guess right about what they want? We finally worked our way through that with the help of you know, some very skilled uh, professionals who gave us good advice. But we ended up in the Immigration Service Office for the final interview. This was many years ago. Um, the Immigration Service is much better today, uh, still has room for improvement, but at that time, we went into the office. There were lots and lots of people waiting to go up to the front counter so they could address their problem. There were big signs saying, do not approach the counter until your number is called. We didn't even know if we were in the right room. And I could see we would be waiting there several hours before we could go to the front. And finally I decided, hey, I'm a US citizen. They can't deport me, can they? So I took the risk. I approached the counter before my number was called. The person behind the counter was not happy, was not very nice, but eventually said, look, this is the right place, go sit down. My wife eventually finished the process, got her green card, and things worked out okay. But I was absolutely disgusted that my country treats people that way, or that people acting on behalf of the government of my country especially in the area of immigration, which to me is, is represented by, you know, the Statue of Liberty. You know, this is what we're about. We're about helping people to have something, something better. People looking for a new life. I mean, to me, that's apple pie, the American dream. And here were the people charged with helping people with that process, treating people kind of like dirt. And I got treated a lot better than the other people who had foreign accents and whose skin might have been a darker tone. And that really made me upset. And I really wished I had the ability to help people fight against this, this evil green monster as, as it appeared to me at that time. Well, years have gone by. The immigration services changed greatly. The professional people that work there that I deal with now on a fairly regular basis I think they're much higher quality. I think they're much better trained, but it is still a difficult and daunting process. And so when my friend suggested I should go to law school and then I recalled the experiences I had had and I realized this would be my opportunity to help people with that process. And so I applied, I was accepted. I finished my law degree in 1992 at Brigham Young University Law School. And uh, after a, a clerkship with a federal judge in McAllen, Texas, I went out into private practice and started learning immigration. And I have never regretted it. I love helping people work through what is still a very complicated and convoluted system. 
even though the people working for the U.S. Immigration Service by and large are better educated, better trained, and seem to have better attitudes, even they are administering a system which was created by Congress, actually created by one Congress and then tweaked and twisted and turned inside out by successive Congresses, to the point where our current immigration laws are extremely confusing, even to the government officials who have to administer them. As an attorney with, as I said, 20 years of experience, I've learned most of the ins and outs that affect people in the application process. And I love being able to help people navigate those sometimes very dangerous waters. And before I close, I have to mention briefly what I consider probably my happiest moment as an immigration attorney. A woman came into our office for a consultation. She had worked very hard and had gotten a, a degree which enabled her to get a good job. And she had a temporary visa which allowed her to work. But there was, had been a problem in, in her children's visas. And she was extremely worried that the next time they left the country, her children's visas would not be renewed and then her visa might be threatened and they could lose everything she had worked so hard to obtain. So essentially she came to me for help in getting in renewing the temporary visas of her children. After talking to her for a while, I asked a few other questions not related to her employment, but just her personal background. And I discovered that her father had actually been born in Tucson, Arizona. He didn't stay in the U.S. a long, long time, but from what she told me, he just barely stayed long enough to qualify to transmit his U.S. citizenship acquired through birth to his daughter, my now client. She said, no, I talked to somebody else. They looked into that. They said it didn't look like I had qualified. Well, I, I wasn't too sure, so we spent some time. We looked at it much more carefully. Her father had been here within weeks of the required period of time to acquire the ability to pass on citizenship, but he had been here long enough. If he had left and returned to Mexico two months earlier, there would be no hope. But he didn't. He was here just long enough. As a result of that, we never got her a visa. We didn't get any visas for her children. Instead, we got her a U.S. passport because she was a U.S. citizen. Had been since birth, just didn't know it. Now she has proof she is a U.S. citizen. She then was able to sponsor her children who got green cards and through the Child Citizenship Act automatically became citizens. And she sponsored her husband and he became a permanent resident and is now eligible for citizenship. I will never forget the day when we walked out of the final interview at the immigration office in Phoenix. And the family standing around, she turned to me and she said, you have changed my family, you have changed our future. There is nothing that would make me happier than that kind of an experience. That's why I do what I do. And I'm happy to share that with you. I hope I have the opportunity to help you with your needs. Thank you.